Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked about the general structure of a reflex arc, but here we're going to be specifically talking about the patellar reflex. Now, before we go any further into this, I want to clear one very important thing up. The patellar reflex is really just a subtype of the stretch reflex. So kind of the main article, so to speak, is the stretch reflex. We could probably just retitle the video stretch reflex. And the patellar reflex is one subtype of the stretch reflex, meaning we could stretch a lot of different muscles here. Okay? In this case, we're actually going to be stretching the quadriceps, but we could stretch pretty much any muscle of the body, uh, theoretically, and we're going to get some reflexive response to that. Okay? The reason the patellar reflex is used as an example of the stretch reflex is because this is a test that's used clinically. So you've probably been to a physician's office or a physical therapist's office, and they've used a reflex hammer to strike the patellar ligament right here. It says patellar tendon. It's really the patellar ligament. Sometimes they use these terms interchangeably, but technically this is the ligamentous part. Anyway, but they strike the patellar ligament, and you get this reflexive movement where you get a knee extension. So your, your lower leg actually comes out forward like you see here. Okay, that's the reflex. And what they're doing generally is they're assessing neurological function. Specifically, they're really assessing uh, the functionality of the nerve roots L2 to L4. Okay? Um, but again, you can do a stretch type of reflex with a lot of different muscles. This one is just really convenient and it's commonly used. So understand, this is the stretch reflex, but we're using the patellar reflex as an example of the stretch reflex. Okay? You can do this in a lot of different areas. This is also what's called a phasic reflex. Phasic is a type of reflex where the reflex is only present as long as the stimulus is present. So, meaning if you strike this with a reflex hammer, you're only going to see one quick reflex. It's not going to stay doing that over and over and over again. That would be a tonic reflex, and usually that's indicative of an upper motor neuron lesion. So, phasic reflex only present as long as you apply the stimulus. Okay. So, let's start talking about this reflex. Okay. So here's a few muscles here to look at. We've got uh, the knee extensors up here. These are the quadriceps. And actually, the stretch receptor, uh, this is actually within the quadricep muscles. The antagonists down here are the hamstrings. Okay? Now, just keep in mind, with the agonist quadriceps and antagonistic hamstrings, okay, um, if we're contracting the quads, we would probably want the hamstrings to relax. And vice versa, if the hamstrings were to contract, the quads would relax because they're antagonistic pairs. So one contracts, one relaxes. So keep that in mind. Also, we have this stretch receptor inside the quadricep muscle. Uh, this stretch receptor, more specifically, is a muscle spindle. Okay? And what muscle spindles do is they monitor the degree of stretch of a muscle. There are some muscle spindles that respond to slow stretch, and there are others that respond to quick stretches. This reflex mechanism is going to operate off of the quick stretch. Because if you think about this hammer, it's going to hit that patellar ligament really quickly. And so it's going to produce a really quick stretch in the muscle. Okay? So this muscle is connected to the quadriceps tendon up here, which is then connected to the patellar ligament down here. So when you strike the patellar ligament, it causes a stretch in the quadriceps tendon and a corresponding stretch in the quadriceps and then a stretch in that muscle spindle. So it's one of those things kind of like where the, the foot bones connected to the ankle bone, connected to the shin bone and all that. Okay? They're all interconnected. So when you strike the patellar ligament, it stretches the muscle spindles in the quadricep and it produces a quick stretch. And these receptors sense that quick stretch and they're going to relay that information into the spinal cord. And we're going to follow this axon right here. It's in orange. We're following it. It's going to enter the spinal nerve right here. And then it's going to enter this engorgement called the dorsal root ganglion. This right here is the cell body of this muscle spindle. Okay, right here. This is the cell body. The axon leading up to this is actually the distal axon projection. And then this right here would be the proximal axon projection. And so the proximal axon projection goes from the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion into the dorsal root and then into the spinal cord. And we can see the termination of that right here. But let's take a zoom in on this real quick. This is important. So in this reflex arc, notice that the proximal axon extension of the entire muscle spindle sensory neuron, notice that it actually divides here. We actually have two synapses. 
okay? This red axon right here, they really gotta color this differently. This red axon kind of on top right here, this is the motor axon that's actually going to the quadriceps, okay? The one on bottom is going to the hamstrings, okay? So quadriceps motor neuron on top here in the picture, hamstrings motor neuron on bottom there. Now before we get into all this over here, again, let's look at this patellar reflex. When we have this patellar ligament struck by the reflex hammer, what do we know happens? Let's just think about it for a second. Well, we know that we get knee extension because the thigh is planted on maybe a table or a chair or something, right? But then the lower leg extends outward, okay? And what muscle would have to contract in order to get this leg to move out as we see right here in the picture? Well, that would be the quadriceps. The quadriceps would have to contract, okay? Because when the quadriceps contract, you get knee extension. Now, for the hamstrings on bottom, and this is specifically biceps femoris, but the hamstrings as a whole would have to relax, okay? Um, if both were to contract, um, that wouldn't really do you any good. You'd probably just stay more or less isometric, um, and you wouldn't get a net knee extension because the hamstring contraction would be counteracting that of the quadriceps. Also, if both were to relax, nothing would happen. So the quads in this case have to contract and the hamstrings have to relax. And we're gonna find that this reflex arc makes that happen exactly. So again, back here, if we follow this proximal axon extension coming from the dorsal root ganglion of the sensory neuron, it bifurcates, right, into two branches. And regardless of which one we're looking at, both are excitatory, meaning they're gonna excite or activate the next neuron in the sequence. Let's look at the part going to the quadriceps first. So here we have a branch of that sensory neuron that's synapsing directly with the quadriceps motor neuron, okay? So if the sensory neuron is exciting this motor neuron, which is to the quadriceps, then that means the quadriceps are going to contract, right? Because if you're exciting the motor neuron to that muscle, then that muscle will contract, okay? So how then do we get the hamstrings to relax? Well, instead of the branch here from the sensory neuron synapsing directly with the hamstrings motor neuron, there's an interneuron here, okay? This interneuron in green is an inhibitory interneuron, okay? So that means when this sensory neuron branch right here excites the inhibitory interneuron, then this inhibitory interneuron can then in turn inhibit the motor neuron going to the hamstrings, okay? So the difference here between these two motor neurons in this reflex arc is that the quadriceps motor neuron does not have an inhibitory interneuron. So the excitation occurs directly on this motor neuron leading to activation or contraction of the quadriceps. Whereas for the hamstring part of the circuit, there's an interneuron here that's inhibitory in function. So when the sensory neuron branch here excites the inhibitory interneuron, now this interneuron can in turn inhibit the hamstrings motor neuron. And so then you get relaxation of the hamstrings. And so then the net effect of this patellar reflex is that when you strike the patellar ligament, it stretches the muscle spindle, and then that muscle spindle sends this information through this neuron right here, and then it excites the next neurons in the sequence, directly for the quadriceps motor neuron, but then it excites the inhibitory interneuron here that leads to inhibition of the hamstrings motor neuron. And so what we observe, therefore, is a knee extension. And to get that knee extension, we have to have quadriceps contraction with simultaneous relaxation of the hamstrings, okay? And this is the patellar reflex. But remember, uh, this kind of reflex arc is gonna be consistent really for any kind of stretch reflex where we're quickly stretching a muscle. And one of the ways we can do that is really by stretching the tendon attached to that muscle because if you stretch the tendon, it will in turn stretch the muscle which will then stretch the muscle spindle. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of a stretch reflex arc. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the following video, we're going to look at the withdrawal reflex. Thank you.